Next up, we have Ling Ling Chu, and they are going to be discussing the overburden hosting during mineralization. Uh, my name is Ling Ling Chu. I came to uh, do the exploration in Saskatchewan since uh, graduation. Um, today is my pleasure to uh, to talk about uh, a new type of uranium. It's overburden hosted. Uh, it comes from our Key Lake South or KLS project. Uh, the work is uh, it's combined work between uh, green coal energy and also traction uranium. The KLS uh, the KLS project is located to the uh, southeast uh, margin south southeast margin of the Aspasca Basin. It was a part of a, a chemicals Cree, uh, Cree Zimmer project in history. The the project is about a six uh, kilometer to the south uh, to the southwest of uh, Key Lake Mine and Mill. I think uh, here everyone knows uh, this famous uh, uh, Key Lake uh, Key Lake Mill. Uh, it's the largest uranium production center in the world. Of course, it's built up on uh, Kilek deposits. The Kilek deposits was discovered in the uh, 1970s. It was, uh, it was the largest uranium mine throughout the 1990s. And this uh, geologic map has been published on this uh, IAGA uh, publication as a cover. And uh, the deposit from here, it, uh, First is uh, service anomaly has been discovered uh, in this area. There's a uh, radio radioactive musk cakes and also uh, radioactive borders with up to 46% user weight. And uh, when do the exploration do really, they realize uh, there's a uh, esker flowing in this way. So they trace back the esker for six, about six, uh, five, six kilometers. Uh, next year, they discovered it's the Gunner first, and then next year, Delman deposit. That is a Key Lake deposit. We have combined all these historical data and uh, to see more detail about this uh, discovery. First is, this is the Zimmer Lake. This is the Key Lake. Zimmer Lake. Uh, the water, the high, extremely high uranium uh, content in the Elmer Lake uh, brought the exploration team here, and they camped at the north shore of, uh, of the Zimmer Lake. Lots of uh, easy transverse found this. Uh, the, that time, they call it a hot island. This is uh, extremely high. That's a, a muskeg, radioactive muskeg with radioactive waters. And uh, 1973, there's a drilling, diamond drilling, on the, in, of course, on this uh, hot island area, but uh, didn't intersect any uranium in the bedrock. In the meantime, the same year, there's a glacier geologist who realized there's esker running through, so they traced back uh, the esker up and also did uh, a lake bottom sampling. Not only this Zimmer Lake area, and also trace back at it, uh, to the Key Lake, the whole area. And you can see these big, uh, big black circles, that is uh, a high uranium. Uh, 1974, they did drilling. They trace back here, I think, yeah, this is a big anomaly here. So they trace back, they followed the, used the uh, glacier theory Followed back, trace back, and actually they're drilling. It's past, it's about one or two kilometer past the letter that discovered this uh, deposit. It passed the deposit. And in uh, 1975, they came back, did the drilling, diamond drilling again. In this area, they found the uh, Gunner deposit, these yellow, yellow dots. I don't know if you can see. Uh, it is a very worthy to mention is. Uh, you can see these contours. That's in 1973. Flew uh, that time already airborne uh, spectro gamma spectrometry uh, survey. You can see these uh, contours and it, these hot island that's uh, reflected in this uh, geophysical survey. So this map is 2005. This is government map. Another. Uh, 
airborne gamma spectrometry survey, we can clearly see this uh, anomaly. And this is the key like mine and meal. Uh, in 1970s, there's no this kind of showing here. That's, uh, but this one already exists. This one is more precise. So we are talk, uh, later talk will depend on this one. We did lots of study, and in this uh, anomaly comes uh, from uh, Kilek deposits, and uh, our conclusion is not. But uh, we, I will not go to too much detail here, and that's another topic. Okay, let's get a close look at this, uh, uh, this uh, anomaly. This anomaly, uh, the total area is about uh, 10 square kilometers, so I call it a giant uranium anomaly, or GUA. And with this, uh, with uh, 10 square kilometers, we can see three spots, A, B, C, that's uh, high spots. And the hot island, or these muskeg, before it's A area, and B and C located in uh, our KLS project. So we did uh, summertime, we have uh, an exploration team uh, from uh, University of Saskatchewan, Reza and Ayatullah, uh, and uh, had uh, prospecting uh, in this area. And it turns out to be B, we didn't find B on the surface, lots of digging, lots of prospecting, but we didn't find anything. C is wet, it's a, it's a radioactive swamp. So uh, exploration team turns out, uh, yeah, we didn't find this, yes, B and, uh, but we found D. So where's D? D is here, this area. So this is D. Uh, that's uh, in the field named black soil. It really looks like a black soil, and this is about uh, the length. It's, it's about uh, this is 15, so it's about uh, 40 around 40 uh, centimeter thick. This stuff, and the essay is uh, transmit tremendous. The essay is about 0.931 U308, and also over 1,000 uh, ppm cobalt. You know, there's a NICO uh, cobalt deposit in Northwestern Territory. The average, uh, average grade is about 0.11% cobalt. And this one is about 0.118% cobalt. And also, there's a nickel and a boron. And the weird time we had a drilling, the downhole probing turns, uh, it's not really, it, it can pick up uh, in the downhole probing. It's just a two, 250 CPS in downhole probing. The reason it's not really clear why it's so low, but uh, the fact is there's a 0.931% uh, user weight. And I think that's possibly because uh, it's shallow and, uh, and also, you know, this is uh, with the casing. There's uh, two uh, metal barrels in the casing, that's uh, NW casing, you know, the NQ uh, drill rig. And also, uh, for, during the survey, the, actually the black soil is saturated with water. You know, water is a very good moderator for radioactivity. So yeah, we, we are, we're not really clear, but uh, these can be the factors. So radioactive uh, swamp. The radioactive swamp is uh, winter time, it looked like this. It's moss, snow, and uh, and the kind of material like uh, black soil material, it's a mixture. On the surface, we, it's over 1,000 CPS with a spectrometer. But it's really the same, downhole probing, nothing. Um, you know, B, we didn't find a B in summertime, so we put a drill hole on it. There's a surprise here. This area, it's a big bump. You know, this is a 1,500 1, CPS. Take a close look. The background is, it's, uh, background is very, very minimal. And uh, you know, it's also a uh, double barrel in the casing survey. Uh, it's, about, uh, it's about six meters of intersection and it's up to 1,254 CPS radioactivity. 
This is in overburden. What is in the bedrock? It starts from uh, a sparse a sandstone. Here, yeah, this white. And uh, yeah, this uh, we just use this section here. Uh, lots of hematization. The you know these core boxes are like a bricks. These uh, uh, orange. Uh, yeah, this color, you know, hematite color. And also white, clay, uh, odoration, and bleaching. The whole, the whole core, the, all these boxes is, uh, see, uh, hematization, clay odoration, hematization, odoration, clay odoration, and, uh, you know, goes, goes like this, and also some uh, bleaching. Uh, it's about 250 meters away. There's a, we have another hole. It's a, number is 008. You can see hematization. This, uh, even these, like I say, the brownish colors, uh, powders, these are hematite. And also clay odoration. This is the core, you know, in wintertime it's frozen. And uh, once it's, yeah, it's, this part is, looks like a, pretty much like a toothpaste. And this, uh, yeah, in this hole, and also uh, uh, it's about uh, 150 meters, uh, we, we can see there's a graphite, so graphitic uh, pilite. Okay, we have this uh, giant uranium anomaly has been discovered probably 1973, uh, and today is 2023, 50 years ago. So this uh, giant anomaly has slept for half century. And uh, our exploration has, uh, I think uh, our exploration woke it up. So these are A, B, C, D. And uh, D is black soil. It's, it's about, uh, it's almost 1% 1 is, 1 is usual weight. That's very sig significant. And uh, well, we look back to history. This is not the first time, actually. And there's an, already there's another 1% uh, uh, use real weight happened in history. That is a uh, uh, sample, S12 soil sampling. That's in 1973. Where's this? It is located to the North Shore. It's a swampy area to the North Shore of uh, Seahorse Lake. Where's that? Today it's gone. It's a, it's a, it's Gander uh, open pit. So just right above the Gander ore deposit in 1973, there's a discovery of uh, uh, soil sampling. It's about one percent use real weight. And today here, 2023, and yeah, this, this is black soil. And we have uh, anomaly B, it's uh, 007, drill six meters intersection of radioactivity. Uh, that's uh, significant too. And uh, the real radioactivity will be higher because it's, uh, you know, it's encasing and also possibility of this uh, water effect. Yeah, we need to remember S12. I think S12, it's a uh, Y, these are, uh, uh, you know, the exploration went to the north of uh, drilling in the history, went to the north of the deposits, and they, next year they came back still doing, focusing on this area. I think that's, uh, that is S12. So, 1976, there's already a drill, a diamond drilling in the Zimmer Lake, the, the water body, that's a winter drilling drill above the, on the lake. There's another six meters of radioactivity, just not as significant as this one we have, but it's about six meters, obviously six meters of uh, on radioactivity is higher. That time, you know, the downhole problem probably is not as sensitive as today's uh, techniques. And uh, this is, uh, you know, the casing has been drilled into the bedrock for about uh, three feet. So in the original report said it's, uh, the material has been destroyed uh, by casing. So uh, no way to, to, to get the material. So, um, and also it's not, they, they consider it's not significant. 
uh, but at six meters of uh, intersection here, it's very worthy to look back. Yeah, I borrowed this uh, from uh, from some uh, some website. This uh, I think there's different versions for the these uh, uh, representative uh, uranium deposits in the Svalbard basin, and these are you know conform conformity type and into these uh, uh, basement basement hosted. I think this map uh, I can understand this map is to emphasize the the, the significance of these uh, basement hosted. I like this one here because this is the, the brown color, that's a glacier too, that's overburden and uh, has a big thickness here. Just right for us to, uh, yeah, to fit out the overburden hosted uranium type. We have on the surface, this black soil, it's, uh, uh, it's about 1% user weight. And also in our 007, it's uh, uh, from 1.6 to 7.6 meters, that's a, uh, uh, Red activity, it's really high actually. And uh, back to uh, history, so that's about 200 feet depth. That is a uh, uh, drill hole uh, number two in 1976 in Zimmer, in Zimmer Lake. So we have, so overburner hosted uranium uh, potential came from surface to deep. And I think even, even can be deeper. Uh, yeah, we're 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 working on this, and we're going to have an over drilling uh, this uh, this uh, this winter and on next spring. And in the meantime, we'll have diamond drilling too. Uh, you know, sitting here, and also we are looking for another arrow. Or I think Key Lake deposit is not listed here. I don't know why. And, uh, uh, it's about here, I think, Key Lake deposit. So we are in, in the bedrock. We'll be looking for uh, another arrow or another uh, key-like deposits. Thank you.